How good is God? Can you quantify it? Does anyone have a measure? Is there any device that could measure the goodness of God? The love that God has for his children. People are about to find out. There's something about you that you're going to finally see. You're about to find out why you have been led to the paths that you have been led to. You're going to find out why you didn't go into that fight. You're going to find out why you didn't argue the way you thought you should have. This is for people who knew that there was a stop. This is for the people who have imagined the right things to say, but you held your tongue. This is for people who understand that they have been under the oppression of not just the world, but the force of the wisdom of God. You had to stay in your place. And the world doesn't communicate like that. The world will tell you, rebel against your parents. Rebel against your brother, your sister. Rebel. Fight them. That's what the world teaches you. It is God who is vengeful for his people. But in order for him to be vengeful and not for you to interfere, he had to create you from the beginning as his chosen child so that you will just obey without him having to say after you were oppressed, after the situation happened. It is within your DNA that you just stay in your place. I'm not talking about people who are mentally doormats. There is a fire burning of injustice. So this is why there has been conflict. This is why the oppression felt even stronger. It's because you understood what justice was from the beginning. You understood that there's something greater, that there's power, that there's something bold. You knew I need to stand in my place. I need to obey my role. For some reason, this is the best thing to do. You know why this is so dangerous? It's because the goodness of God kills darkness. It overrides, it consumes it, it besieges it. It causes darkness to surrender. It's dangerous. To you, it's like, oh no, it's I'm not trying to. You know, I'm just being me because I'm in the flesh. It's just me, guys. Hey, guys, it's just me. Do you remember me? Hey, remember when we used to do this? And God is saying, listen, child, I made you a certain way that you repel darkness. It is disgusting. It doesn't belong in your life. You have already gone through the fire and you are being unveiled and you are being shown and displayed. You're going to see people run away. They determined that that was enough. That was enough goodness. This person was already born with talent. That is enough. We will bury her here. That is enough. This person already was born with a certain physical aspect. They're well driven or they have great charisma. That is enough. We're going to cap it off there. This is where we draw the line as far as how much favor you can get. This is where we draw the line as far as how much blessings you should receive because we have seen just a glimpse of what God was doing in you and now we can't we can't continue it we have to cut it off here the world cannot find out so the spirits of darkness will try to muffle all these things God needs you to see as he exalts you and he needs your light to shine on that disgusting darkness Wicked spirits are getting exposed. They are fleeing. They are swimming away. They are running away. They are creeping away. They are crawling away. They are afraid. They are afraid that God's hand could not be muted. They thought that they could mute you and God let it happen. He said, bring it on. Go ahead. Continue. Keep, keep that talk. Keep that gossip. Keep going. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Go ahead. Keep bad mouthing my child. Go ahead. Keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Watch. Now look at my hand. Look at the hand of God. Now look at the hand of God. Who can go against the hand of God? Who is stronger than the Lord Jesus? Who? You don't know who's behind me. You don't know who is with me. And you don't know who made me. They're going to run. The glory of the Lord will be reflected in you. I mean, hey, it was God. It was Jesus. I humble myself. Let's get back to that mindset because this is not about being egotistical. This is not about believing that my works, your works, were the ones that did this. It was God. It was God because he put you under pressure. It was God because he let you suffer in silence. It was God because he was with you in the den with the lions. He was there with you. And so the world may not understand how the lion's mouths were shut because they weren't there with you. 
And every time they see a lion, the lion bites. So your testimony is not in trying to convince people that God is good. Your testimony is simply being lifted because of God's goodness. It's not my job to convince you of how he did it. Watch, continue looking, continue looking at God's chosen one. For anyone who is not um, believing fully in how God could do certain things for people, or for people who carry the spirit of jealousy and envy, for people who carry those dark spirits, grab a notepad, please, and get a pen, because we have written down our, our prophecies. We have written down what God has spoken to us. We have written enough. Now it's your turn to take notes. It's your turn to look at the pattern. It's your turn to see, wow, they were right. It's your turn to see, wow, when they were in the lowest of lows, how are they able to still smile? How did they How did they get to do this? Huh? What? Yeah? Go ahead, we'll give you five minutes. While you're doing that, while you're taking your test and while you're trying to figure out God's goodness, I'll be outside. I'll be in the sunlight figure it out ponder it I invite you grab a pen because what God is doing is too good get your pen and your paper sit down you have time and while you're at it repent because the pain that people have caused God's chosen ones we don't wear it anymore. You can't tell. Now, now it's like you're speaking too harshly. I wouldn't have said it in that way. The way that I was made is too harsh. The way that God uses me is too harsh. Now it hurts, doesn't it? It's God. Do you think it felt good, suffering? Take notes. And while you do all of that, and find somewhere in your heart the inkling to repent, I will be outside. You're about to see the people running away. You're about to see that their language changes. They're surrendering to the will of the Lord for you. Yes, Lord, I know you have told her to tell me things. Yes, Lord, I know you have made her warn me. You have given him the, the guidance to give me. And we didn't listen because we thought that he was just stupid. We thought that he couldn't do it. We thought she couldn't do it. We thought they were too young. We thought they were not uh, actually worth it. We thought... You were wrong, you were wrong, you were wrong, you were wrong, you were wrong because you didn't believe that God could. I want you to see that God did it more than you could see, oh, what does your hair look like? Oh, let me see that ring on your finger. Oh, let's see, uh, what job did you get? What's your new salary? More than all of that, be quiet. I need you to see who did it. So that's why God mutes our tongues. He, he, he makes our tongues stick to our to our mouths so that we don't we don't speak so that they can see who it was so that I can say search my pockets it wasn't me I, I didn't 